Welcome back to When Geeks Craft. This year for Halloween, we're going to be the scariest thing from the Fallout universe. Vault Tech Scientists. So you've seen enough printing montages and you don't need to see me sand because that's super boring, but let's check out all the pieces for all of the stuff. To be effective Vault-Tec scientists, we need Pip-Boys and some armaments. We've got a Pip-Boy 3000, a Pip-Boy 3000 Mark IV, a 10mm pistol, and luckily something that's in our armory already is an AEP-7 laser pistol. Now it's time to get priming. As you can see, everything has been primed, so now we're going to start assembling it all. Okay, good. So now that all the pieces are primed and all put together, it's time to actually start painting them. And I'm gonna start with the pistol because frankly, it's the easiest. I'm going to be using a series of dry brushing on top of it because this gun is from the wasteland and it's kind of really grody. So I don't really know what order I'm gonna be doing things in, but I'm just gonna kind of lay paint down and see what happens. I started by dry brushing on some silver paint. To dry brush, you mostly paint a paper towel so that only a hint of paint is left on the brush. That hint of paint is then haphazardly applied to the prop. Once all the silver was applied, I moved on to the pistol grip. I put down some brown paint and then rolled out a thin piece of clay to create some texture. I wanted to mimic the texture from the pistol in the game that didn't really come out in the 3D print. I used various pokey tools to make this texture. When I was finally happy with it, I used a heat gun to harden it in place. When it was finally firm, I painted it, applied a dry brush of silver, and then impatiently waited for it to dry. When it was finally dry, I glued it in place and added some finishing touches to the pistol. First was some brown dirt. Following some reference images of a rather rusted pistol, I eyeballed where some dirt would be. Once it was all applied, I started adding a sprinkling of rust. This is a pretty rusted pistol in the game, so we really wanted to make it match. Looks nice and grimy. Then it was Pip-Boy time. Now if I'm being honest, I didn't really record much of the Pip-Boy painting process because it really matches the process of the pistol. I found a reference image online, dry brushed the color on, and called it good. The Pip-Boy 3000 was painted green, and the 3000 Mark IV was painted a sandy greenish color. In the end, you'll see. Everything looks nice and grimy, I promise. One important thing not mentioned yet is the dosimeter. It's the yellow box in the right pocket of the lab coat seen here. I couldn't find a 3D model I liked online, so I went and made it in Fusion 360. I really like how it came out, so that's why there's a much more comprehensive build montage. We use the airbrush this time around, as the yellow paint goes on much easier with it. Since the airbrush was out, we also decided to spray on the silver. Metallics look much nicer without any brush strokes, and the airbrush really does deliver. I was able to use an actual toggle switch that has a great tactile feel. Now the switch doesn't currently do anything, but that's the beauty of this project. 
We can add functionality to this later. Real screws were used as they always look best. Only the four on the main box actually function, the other two large ones are for looks. The gauge for the amount of rads the wearer has endured is all printed pieces. 3D for the cylinder construction and 2D for the paper and acrylic. The acrylic is set in place with UV resin to keep the acrylic clear. Normally we use super glue to affix parts, but super glue and acrylic don't really mix. Super glue fogs acrylic. While we do want our decimeters to look worn down, it doesn't need to look that damaged. We glued the gauge together and then shoved it in place. This was all friction fit into the model. I think they turned out super nice. Now it's time to make them look really rusted. I used the same rust paints from the pistol to add the color. I started with a brown, then an orange, and then toned it all together using the same yellow from the base coat. And the dosimeter is done. So one of the parts of the build I thought was going to be easy is complicated now because in Fallout, the Vault-Tec lab coat has two chest pockets, whereas in real life, lab coats don't have two chest pockets, apparently. Uh, looking all over online, so what we did is got two of the same lab coat, and we're going to take the left chest pocket from one and put it on the right side of the other one. Hi. Can I help you? So this is a pretty weird place to be but it's for a good reason. So the lab coats, you can see outside are really bright, really white. They would not be if they had been in the wasteland for any period of time. So we're going to make them a little bit dirtier. To get the most authentic look, I think I'm literally just gonna start rolling around in the dirt because that's essentially what you do in the wasteland. Not, not super effective, unfortunately. I mean, a couple things. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit more educated of an approach and probably just take some dirt and push it on spots where it makes sense. We got like dirt resistant clothes here. I'm getting better at making things dirty. All you do is take dirt and rub it on it. It's much more simple than I expected. Now there is only one thing left to add to our lab coats before we could call this project done, and that was adding the vault Tech logo to the chest pockets. Using a vinyl cutter and some stencil vinyl, I cut out the logo and applied the stencil to the coat. I used fabric paint to paint the logo in. After a few minutes, I removed the stencil and let it all dry. Now it's time to suit up. We want to give a shout out to all our Patreon members. It's because of your support that we're able to make cool things. All the files will be on Patreon. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching, see you all next time.